Hey everyone, Dan from On One here. I'm really excited to talk to you about some of the great changes in the effects module as part of On One Photo Raw. The first thing I want to talk about is just the raw speed and performance. Photo Raw has a completely new processing engine in it. We built it for processing raw, but it works with any photo and it's all done in the GPU. It's incredibly fast. It's wicked fast. Let me show you. I'm going to grab what is historically the slowest filter, lens blur. And when I click on lens blur, bam, you can see it's instant. We don't get little tiles as it draws in and updates. It updates instantly. Now I'm going to grab the amount slider. Now watch this. I'm going to bring it down to zero and I'm going to bring it up. Look how fast it does that lens blur. It's real time lens blur, even up to incredibly high amounts. It's fast, it's beautiful. And this is just with one filter. Every filter is now done in the GPU and is lightning fast. Even when I add something like the masking bug to it, it continues to have that same kind of performance. You'll see how quickly the masking bug updates and changes. So you really get that super fast real time performance that we've always dreamed about is now possible with this new engine. Let me just turn that amount down to something a little more realistic there. There we go. Check that out. See how fast and fluid that was. Everything you do feels like that now. Now, the second thing that I love is the ability to adjust filters in the middle of the stack. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to grab a preset here. And this is a big preset. You notice it's got one, two, three, four, five filter layers in it. Now in the past, if I wanted to adjust something, let's say I wanted to adjust this photo filter right here in the middle, as soon as I clicked on it, it would turn off the split tone in the bleach bypass. I wouldn't be able to see those while I make an adjustment. But now every filter in your stack is live in real time all the time. So I can select this photo filter here in the middle and I could tweak its amount or tweak its color right here in real time and still have my other filters like split tone and bleach bypass turned on above it. It makes your adjustments so much faster by being able to see everything in their correct context. All right, I'm going to add a vignette to this to show you one of my other favorite new features. And that's what we call styles. There's always been these little preset buttons at the top and these match the same thing you see over here in the filters pane. So for example, and I see something like big softy over here in my filters drawer and I see big softy over here. Those are both the same what we call a style. In the past, you haven't been able to modify or create your own versions, but that's changed. You can actually create your own. Let's say I really like Big Softy, but I always think the brightness is just a little too dark. And rather than being at minus 100, I wish it was at minus 80 instead. So there we go. I can adjust it to what I want. I go to the More Style pop up and I can save my own styles. So I'm going to call this my Big Softy. There we go. And now that'll appear right here in the styles drawer on the left right there there's my big softy and it'll appear over here in the pop-up list and i can use that think of it like a preset but i can use it at a filter by filter level now so it's much faster to really tweak things and make things much more reusable for you going down the road one of the other really big changes and effects is that you now have access to all of the local tools so now i can use a tool like the crop tool right here inside of effects and I can dial in just the crop that I'm interested in. We also have the retouching tools in here now, which is really handy because a lot of times you'll add something like a dynamic contrast filter and you didn't see the dust until after you've added it. Now you can actually do your retouching right inside of effects. So I'm just going to grab a couple little dust spots here to show you what I can do. So here's a little light trap right there in her hair. I will zap that out and then maybe right along the top of this brick, there's a little highlight there I don't like. There we go. So you can see how I can retouch right inside of effects. Beyond that, there's also the new local adjustments. Local adjustments are shared between develop and effects, but it works just like the effects stack does inside of effects. If I click on local adjustments or I use either the local adjustment tools, the adjustment brush or the adjustable gradient, I can add as many of these adjustment layers as I want, each with their own settings and each with their own mask. The cool part is they're shared between effects and develop. So if I go to develop, those same layers are there. So I could start my work in develop, then move to effects and still readjust them. I'm just going to use an adjustment layer here to darken the left and the right hand side. So I'll just use a gradient tool. I'll select reflected gradient and I'll just click. Let me turn it right side up. Now you notice it's darkening the middle. I actually want the opposite. Here's one of the other cool new changes. You can now invert masking bugs again. So I'll just go over here to my mask option and click invert. There we go. 
Now my masking bug darkens the outside instead of the inside. That's something I really miss that we used to be able to do. And now you can do it again. There we go. And then with that exposure slider, I can control how dark I want those edges to be. All right, let's go back to the overall settings for a second. I want to show you another minor but really useful improvement. Let's open up the split tone pane. And you notice that any place where you can pick a color, like the highlight and shadow color in the split tone, or with a photo filter, when you pick the color of a photo filter down here, you see there's a new hue slider. This makes it a lot easier to change the color without having to bring that color picker up and change it inside of the color picker. You can now just grab the hue slider and shift the color to be whatever you want. I'll show you where this comes in really handy. It's when you add a border or a texture to your photos. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a border on top of this. Now I'm just gonna use a very simple white border, but this works with any of the different borders there's a new colorize option. The same thing works with textures as well. It makes it a lot easier to change the color of that border and pick just the color that you want. So watch, I'll just enable this colorize option. It fills it with whatever color is in here and now I can just shift that color to be whatever I want or I could even use the dropper tool to pick a specific color. Maybe I want the blue from her jeans, just like that. Now you know I don't like that. Maybe let's go a little darker. All right, now last, what is probably my favorite and the most powerful new feature is the film strip. So I can bring my film strip view up and now I can take the settings from this photo and I can apply it to a bunch of others. So watch, I can just scroll over here and I can pick all those similar photos. I'll just select those, I'll click the sync button and it'll apply my entire stack to all of those photos in a single click, just like that. It's so much faster for your workflow it makes it really cool because you can apply things in a batch instantly that you've never been able to apply before. Things like borders or textures or glows or all the full power of the stack inside of effects. You can now batch apply non-destructively to an entire shoot of photos. It makes your workflow super fast. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.